Dr. Donald Henderson is a traditionally trained gastroenterologist. He is an associate clinical professor at UCLA Medical Center and chief of staff at Daniel Freeman Hospital in Los Angeles. Although he has a conventional practice, Dr. Henderson understands his patients want more than traditional drug treatment. They're now very interested in exploring alternative therapies and the use of natural food supplements such as colostrum. The wonderful feature in the, in the design of our bodies is that there is always an opportunity to try to improve our health and to assist our body's normal functioning to reestablish health whenever there is a situation of disease. And now we can take colostrum as well as we take vitamins and other supplements just like we take antibiotics to get well when we're sick. As a physician who practices integrative medicine, Dr. Lester Adler combines what he sees as the best of Western medicine with alternative therapies. Dr. Adler believes conventional Western medicine is very important and can be life-saving. In case of emergencies such as car accidents, heart attacks, or ruptured appendix, traditional medicine and surgery are critical. But if we have chronic problems, very often we need to work with the body and not just take drugs. We need to take nutrients. We need to take effective natural therapies to help the body to create the internal milieu to heal what is going on. And so natural and conventional have been very much separated. Now the lines are blurring and we have people who are speaking up within the conventional community. We see that people are using natural medicine. We see it's proliferated into the pharmacies, into the health food stores, even into the uh, discount stores. Hello, hello. Dr. Marcus Lowe is a naturopathic physician. That means he keeps himself, his family and his patients well with natural medicine. Wow, you did it! How many? So I'm taught minor surgery, blood draws, diagnostic techniques, the use of x-ray and CAT scans, but specialize in looking, how do I create health by optimizing the person's immune system, by stimulating their vital force, using things in nature that are safer, gentler, and usually help bring about a more permanent cure. B. Patrick stays busy, owning and operating two thriving fast food franchises in Los Angeles. B also has multiple sclerosis, an illness characterized by episodes of weakness and loss of energy. B was getting the most advanced available treatment for MS, but she still suffered from fatigue and frequent illness. Dr. Henderson showed B the extensive research done on colostrum and suggested she consider taking it, which she did with very positive results. I keep up with my staff. The average age is about 20. I have not had a cold or a virus, which are real big negatives for people with MS. I have been blessed with an opportunity to tell people how I have managed to overcome, and I do view it as an overcoming of an illness that others have not. Do I suggest to them that have this, that they should consider very strongly putting this in their diet? Yes. Do I think that they will be better served by having it? Yes. Do I think that they will be able to exist without it? Yes. It's a personal decision, one that I made for me that works very well for me. There are a number of patients who have had diseases such as multiple sclerosis and other ill-defined diseases such as chronic fatigue have, who have reported remarkable improvement with the use of bovine colostrum. The bottom line is you want to feel better and be healthy. And whatever helps you do that, that's what you should do. There is scientific data that indicates that infants that are breastfed actually suffer less disease in life. Now, at, at this point, I know I looked back personally to try to remember or if my mother told me whether or not I was breastfed, and I think I was. Uh, but there are many people who I see with chronic illnesses and many diseases that are ill-defined who I really now feel that they were not breastfed and did not receive colostrum as infants. While it is cow-derived, what we see is that the factors that can provide immunity, that can increase growth, are transferable between species. We know that these transfer factors, these uh, uh, antibodies that work in a cow, work extremely well in the human. 
The adult immune, immune system is constantly being bombarded by external forces, medications, toxins, pollutants, cigarette smoke, drugs, etc. And we need to take something into our bodies that helps to support and reestablish the normal function of our immune system. Christine McGann lives the good life in Southern California now. She's completely recovered from a devastating illness that began 20 years ago. She was a hairdresser at the time and was exposed to a chemical toxin which completely destroyed her immune system. And they told me I was never going to get better and I didn't believe it. And that's how I started to investigate myself. You know, what could I do? What could be rebuild? How can I change my life? What can I help, help, help? Christine had developed severe allergies and digestive problems. Her ongoing research finally led her to try colostrum. My digestion problems went away and um, my allergies, I'm gone. My nose wasn't running. Christine has been taking colostrum daily ever since. And not just any colostrum. Christine's experience has shown her not all colostrum is created equal. I'm not going to just go into the store and just pick anything off the shelf and go, oh, yeah, it says colostrum, I'll take it. I want to know where it comes from and what, what care goes into the product. Mary Schnack has always been an athlete. She plays golf, basketball, tennis, and works out three times a week, all in addition to her busy life as a mother and head of a PR firm. But in 1999, she was forced to drop her fitness routine. The uterine cancer she thought she'd beaten in 1996 had returned. Her doctors began radiation treatments to fight the cancer. I had extreme fatigue, I had extreme loss of energy, and then, you know, everything with radiating the pelvic area that you can imagine, you know, diarrhea, nausea. I had been on colostrum. Dr. Adler started me on colostrum about two years earlier. I was doing a lot of business travel, and I was getting a lot of colds, and so he suggested colostrum as an, an immune boost for me, and I, I just swore by it, and if I felt something coming on, I would just like double or triple my intake of colostrum, and it would just keep it at bay so it was great but um, during the treatment time the radiation oncologist wanted me off the colostrum because it's it's really controversial whether you should take antioxidants or not during radiation treatment and he felt like there was enough antioxidant um, benefit in within colostrum that I should not be on it so I started back on colostrum um, about probably about a week after the radiation was over and um, and I started a, a real strong exercise program about, a, about six weeks later. The growth factors in colostrum have also helped others lose weight. Probably the last year, year and a half, I've lost probably 10 pounds with no work whatsoever. I've not changed my diet, uh, I've not changed my exercise pattern, anything. Colostrum is one of the few natural supplements that has been shown to increase the IGF-1 growth factors levels in the human body. IGF-1 is the natural growth factor produced by the human body. It's much safer than artificial growth hormones, which some people use to slow the effects of aging. Colostrum plays a role and is probably going to be a very valuable player as we look at anti-aging and longevity. Athletes have used colostrum to help them compete, depending on the natural growth factors to increase their levels of peak performance to new highs. And regular colostrum users routinely comment that they feel better than ever before. My energy level is really very good. My attitude about life is also very positive. I um, have been taking um, vitamins for years, and they certainly have their place. Um, but I would say that in terms of my physical stamina, it has been significantly changed. And, and the, the one thing that I can say that I've done differently over the course of the last six months is taking colostrum daily. I think there is a decreased likelihood of becoming sick when one takes colostrum. And you, you could tie that to the boosting the immune system, but I think it's more than that. Colostrum has been the subject of ongoing research for many years. Research findings indicate colostrum not only bolsters the immune system and promotes the growth of lean muscle, it can also help clear up allergies, encourage the healing of wounds, decrease stress and depression, and fight bacterial infections, 
It also appears to help slow the replication of viruses such as hepatitis C and HIV. But the clinical research that was done was, was on human trials. It's the same type of research that's done for drug qualifications here in the United States and throughout the world. So the quality of research we feel is very different than is associated with most supplements and most nutraceuticals. Well, I think one of the, the most promising and most validated uses for colostrum is in the GI tract. Uh, there, there's no question that it has potent antimicrobial effect. That antimicrobial effect means colostrum can help restore balance to the different forms of bacteria that live in a healthy, functioning intestinal tract. Colostrum also works to repair what's called leaky gut syndrome, which happens when the intestinal lining has been damaged. There's a chance for the cells to be damaged, for the membranes and, and the glue that holds the cells together to become weak and the cells to become separated. And as a byproduct, substances that usually do not get into, this, into the blood system will come in and create an inflammatory reaction. So there are substances in the colostrum that help seal, help coat, help mature that intestinal tract to be able to recognize what it needs to absorb and help keep out, defend, and neutralize those things that are pathogens or things that can be harmful. A human clinical study on colostrum from 1999 suggests colostrum's healing power in the intestinal lining is applicable to external skin surfaces as well. So colostrum can be used in a broad sense um, much more than, than it is being used today. Herbal treatments such as echinacea and ginkgo biloba are not natural foods. Today, food supplements and herbal preparations are not regulated by the FDA, which makes individual research and awareness all the more important. One concern doctors have about herbal treatments is that patients may not admit to taking them, and they may conflict with drugs the doctors prescribe. Colostrum, however, is a natural food and can be used safely in the body to fight off chronic disease and support ongoing good health. When we can augment the body, when we can feed the body with nutrients, we're giving the body what it needs to take care of itself. Uh, they're all upside swings to it. There are no negatives. It does not counteract with any medication that I was taking for my multiple sclerosis, which was very, very important to me, that I didn't want the medication that I am taking for it to have any side effects to it at all. It has none. Now, it won't heal everything or everybody every time, <clears throat> but today it is a tremendous, tremendously important food supplement that could be used to help maintain our health. Medicine is a science. Doctors like to see data. The more data we have to show the benefits of colostrum, both clinically, in practice, and on a basic science level, in terms of showing its mechanisms of action, doctors will more and more be able to accept it as a therapeutic tool, just like anything else.